Okay, so here I have a model where I have one main endogenous variable, which is success, which is influenced by these variables uh, here, uh, project management, job satisfaction, e-collaboration. E-collaboration influences success indirectly. So in a model like this, with success being an endogenous variable, at the population level, what I have is something like this. Success equals a path coefficient times uh, project management plus a path coefficient times e collaboration plus a path coefficient times job satisfaction plus an error term. This error term is random and uh, it imparts, it, it, it gives unique variation to success. Now, in this particular sample here, what I have is um, uh, about 300. Uh, I think I have exactly 300 uh, data points. So because of this structural error term, I would expect success to have about 300 uh, different values or 300 uh, unique observations because this error term is, again, unique uh, in the sense that it provides unique variation to uh, success, and it's random. This, uh, this structural error almost always exists in, uh, in, um, in models with endogenous variables for each endogenous variable, and it accounts for the explained variance in the variable that is not explained by the predictors or by the model. In our case, that would be 19% for success. So this error would explain uh, the remainder or uh, 81%. So in, let's, let's see how many uh, different values we have for success. I can see that through this window. So the number of different values for the variable success is six. And again, the sample size is uh, 300. So what's, wh what is the reason for that? The reason is that these variables were measured on Likert type scales. And success, if I show the indicators, I see that success has only one indicator for it. So it was measured on a Likert type scale with six points and has only one indicator associated with it. So it has very few uh, values, different values. So the amount of variation in success because of that is way lower than it should have been uh, if the sample was drawn from a population. So because of that, uh, whenever you have less variation, you have a suppression in coefficients of association associated with the variable, which are these two here, path coefficients. And because you have these suppressed, you also have a suppression in the R squared. How do I solve this problem? I solve this problem by uh, employing uh, logistic regression. So what I will do is create a logistic regression a variable that I can use instead or in place of success. In order to do that, I go to explore logistic regression. And there are two options, probit and logit. Uh, probit is for dichotomous, is recommended for dichotomous uh, uh, variables. Logistic regression logit is for non-ratio variables that are not that are, that, are, that have more uh, uh, different values than two, so but that have significantly fewer than the sample size. So I'll choose logit. Here, for me to create this logistic regression variable, uh, I can set the local uh, VIF cap local focal linearity VIF cap for the little model that I'm going to build 
uh, to a certain value. The default is 2.5, which, which tends to ensure that your focal linearity variance inflation factors for the entire model later, when you use the logistic regression variable, are uh, below 3.3, which is guaranteed uh, uh, absence of multicollinearity. So I'll leave it as the default 2.5. I could, I could change it by just entering a new value here, but I'll keep 2.5. And the little model that I'm going to build here to, to, to work this out, to, to develop this uh, um, uh, logistic regression variable will be one in which I will have the endogenous variable as my main my variable to be uh, converted and I will have the predictors of this variable as predictors including indirect predictors because this new variable will be a probability variable, probability that success will be high or probability that success will be above average. And this probability is influenced by direct predictors as well as indirect predictors. So I'm going to uh, choose my predictors, project management, Ecolab, JSAT, and these Weights are the weights that the software are telling me that will be the weights I will get if I use a logistic regression variable. And this is for linear, uh, these are linear uh, weights. Uh, often logistic regression variables, uh, they are non-linearly related to other variables because uh, the, the uh, function that associates uh, them with uh, predictors is usually a logistic function. That's how the software models it to be. But I will, I will just, I will go ahead and uh, I will create my logistic regression variable for success. Now I have this uh, now uh, added to my model as a new indicator. If I look at the uh, raw indicator data. Now I'll see that I have this variable. Now this is the raw, so this is the raw data, so it's unstandardized. And again, this was based on success, the latent variable success. That was measured through a single indicator, this one, success one. Now notice that there is le less variation here than here. And these numbers are actually probabilities probabilities that success will be high. So what I will do now is I will reanalyze my model. What I, one thing that I want to do first is to, to save these results for comparison. So I'm going to just save them into an Excel file. So I will save them here just so that I can, when I redo the analysis, I can easily compare them with, uh, with my new results. So these are the results that I currently have with success being measured on a Likert type scale with a single variable. Now I'm going to modify my model. And for success, instead of that indicator, I'm going to use this logistic regression variable. Now save the model. <clears throat> and now I'll redo my analysis. So now the results, here are the results that I got. So 
So first of all, let's take a look at the focal linearity variance inflation factors. So I have them here. And as we can see that um, the uh, FCVIF for success a little bit higher than the 2.5 that I uh, created, that I set as a cap before, because this is the FCVIF for the full model. This is why we have used 2.5 as default to make sure that this number here is uh, a little bit high, uh, that this is below 3.3. Now, uh, it, this depends on the, the level that you're willing to accept for focal linearity variance inflation factors. If you set this level as 5, then you could have changed that cap to a higher number, maybe uh, 4 or 3.5. But anyways, no collinearity, which is good. Now we can see that the number of different values for success much higher, closer to, and, and the, uh, the ratio with the total sample is much closer to one, which is what you would expect for an endogenous variable. Uh, another thing that we notice here when we compare with the previous analysis results is that um, the R squared is significantly higher. It doesn't mean that all the results uh, are, are, are better than, uh, than you got before because as you can see here, this path coefficient went down uh, compared to this one, but the R squared increased. That's typically what happens. And now what you should understand is that success is not is no longer that previous measure of success on a Likert type scale. Now it's a measure of the probability of success. If I take a look at uh, one of the graphs for say success and its main predictor, which is project management. And if I go to the option, just for illustration purposes, uh, multivariate relationship with data points on standardized scales, what I get here on the, the scale for success is a probability going from zero to one, which is 100%. So what this is telling me is that as project management goes up in value, so does the probability of success um, in, in this particular model. So this uh, concludes this demo on how to conduct a um, a logistic regression analysis.